everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. I'm Selena Rohn, and this is Close to Death. Uh, tonight, we have a pretty cool guest that I've been waiting to uh, interview for a while. However, we've been hanging out kind of all weekend at the Tyler Paracon. Uh, from Deep South Paranormal is Kevin Betzer. Hey, Kevin, what's going on? What's hey. going on? How you doing? I am about as tired as you are, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So, uh, let me, uh, everybody kind of, kind of, some people know of Deep South Paranormal and some people kind of don't get sci-fi, so can you kind of tell them uh, a little bit about the show and fill them in? I, uh, Deep South Paranormal was on a uh, sci-fi channel. Uh, we just finished up our first season. Uh, it was myself, Hart, Randy, Benny, John, Keith, and Callie. So there were seven of us on the show. And uh, we'll go around and check out haunted locations. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> we were lucky enough to go all over uh, pretty much the whole south. I think it was the southeast. And we were able to check out a lot of places. So, you know, very lucky we were able to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um and you kind of were telling me a little bit about how you got that gig, uh, and it's kind of interesting. Why don't you tell everybody how that happened? Because, uh, you know, you guys were way down in New Orleans, and it's kind of hard to find folks, just pick folks out of the, the South there, because there's a lot of paranormal teams out there. But There is. There you is. Must have stood, you must have stood out for some reason, so tell them how that happened. Uh, well, I mean, myself and Randy, uh, we're next door neighbors. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, we, we used to ha we used to have arguments on what was real and what was not real on these paranormal shows. Right. And, uh, Randy was always the skeptic and, uh, I would be like, no, you know, that possibly could be paranormal. And he would be like, no, no, no. We'd go back and forth. And, uh, his dad also lived on the other side of us and his dad was a full blown you know, oh, I believe it, and all this stuff. So uh, the three of us would just go at it back and forth on what was real and what was not real. And uh, after a while, it was more of like me and Randy decided to come up with our, our local group, Down South Paranormal. And, you know, we'd go to places in New Orleans all down here and just, you know, try to find these different locations. And... uh We'd, we'd, we'd go in, like, cemeteries and all this stuff, starting out, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, eventually it came around to where I actually started getting Randy to actually believe in the paranormal. <laughs> so after a while, you know, we started doing it, you know, a lot. So we just kind of, we are, uh, oh, wait, here he is here. Oh, we got a special yeah. guest that I promised you would be there, man. I'm glad he's uh, going to... Let me see. Him. Hold up real, real quick. All Let me right. see if I can get him. All right. <laughs> anyway, our special guest is going to be Randy Hardy, which I was uh, had the pleasure of hanging out with all weekend with these guys and at Tyler Paracon, which George Jones put on, and, and uh, it was really awesome. We had a great, great time. Oh, I see a kitty cat. Um... Anyway, Tyler Paracon was was pretty good, pretty awesome. There was a lot of cool locations we all got to investigate, and a lot of different experiences. All right. All right. Sorry about that. I saw him. That's he was right good. there by the door. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What's going on? Hey, what's up? What's up? Not much. Um, I introduced you a little bit before before you got in the door there. Um, glad you were you talking about uh, kind of like how you were a skeptic. And uh, how I kind of got you to start going on different locations and how we got to, uh, to where we are now. I was a non-believer, not a skeptic. So, yeah. Yeah. He was Proof saying, he was like, no, no, that's all BS. That's all BS. Yeah. So, I used to argue with him and my dad. But you know what? Once I seen things with my own eyes and had my own experiences, can't say no after that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's that's what we call uh, bringing you over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, we had so much fun this weekend at Tyler Paracon and stuff. And uh, I don't know which locations you guys were at. Um, 
the location that we had was kind of hard to find because of the construction. Everybody was complaining that they couldn't find it or whatever, but we uh, actually, there was a psychic with our group that crossed someone over, crossed the spirit over, which was crazy because I've, I've never even seen that happen or, I, you know, who knows, but it was a cool experience. There was a, a couple of uh, people there on their first, like they were virgin uh, ghost hunters and they had never been there before. And so they got to witness something pretty awesome. And so I'm sure I said, that's it. You're going to have the fever now. You better start <laughs> down, man, because you're going to need equipment. I said, it, it's going to be bad. It's like a drug. So where were you right. guys we uh, what was it? What Rose, plant? Rosewood or something like that? Rosewood, Rosewood plantation. plantation. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it was a beautiful place. The inside was just amazing. I, I mean, you're walking in there and it's like a museum. You're scared to bump into anything. You know, you might break something. That's exactly. what I told the owner. I was like, dude, I said I'm scared to even walk through it. I said we kind of clumsy and you got stuff in there that looks priceless. You know. <laughs> yeah. But the crazy thing about it is is we went and I'm all psyched up. It kinda, we all psyched up because we wanted to do this big old house. But they also have a, a chapel on the grounds, which is pretty small and pretty empty, just pews, you know, like, yeah. like 20, 30 pews. I went in there because the whole, everybody went in the house, okay? <laughs> and me and John. Um, John, uh, I'm, yeah. you familiar with John Brightman? Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, yep. well, me and him and Kevin went straight to the chapel because I, there was a lot of people. And you know how that is with a lot of people. Yeah, you know, I know how you are. You like to do but, it by yeah. yourself. Well, when I went there, I I wound up staying in there the whole time. I never did investigate the house because the activity in that little bitty church was just so off the chain that I couldn't bring myself to leave. I stayed there wow. all night. The activity wow. was just amazing in there. Really? And, and uh, just to give you an idea of what was going on, uh, we were using the Echo Vox in the uh, chapel. And we're asking, you know, who who might be there and what's going on. So we ask, you know, wh who is it? Who Who's here with us? And it kept saying me, me, me. And it started calling John's name. So it started asking for John. So John happens to come in and he's like, well, what's going on? Why is it calling for me? So John starts asking, well, who, who is me and why are you calling my name? And, it, and uh, what, what, what happened? He says, he, he kept at, he said, uh, he said, uh, all right, who's calling me? And it said me. And he's like, okay, who is me? And, uh, <laughs> and then he said, well, who's calling me? And it said me again. He's like, all right, well, who is, because this is direct answers. This isn't taking a while. This is right after he's asking. You know, it's pretty direct. And uh, he asked, who is me again? And it said, dad. And he's like, okay. He's like, all right, really? All right, now, settle down. All right, who is this again? And he asked again, and directly again, it said, dad. He broke into tears. And we and, didn't know what was going on. We didn't know why. He, he walked out. out. Yeah. He walked out, and we just kind of standing there. What's, what's going on, you well, know? I went outside to talk to him. His dad just passed away two months ago. Oh, and dang. the fact that he got that, I mean, got him real emotional, you know? Yeah. But another thing that validated it is Kevin walked, well, you tell him what happened to you, and then before we knew what happened, like, what well, happened? Well, yeah, I mean, he walked out, and, you know, he, he just had to step away for a few minutes. And uh, so we kind of took a break. And I left, so I went back to the actual plantation while they just kind of like sat there and took a break. And as I was walking, my leg, for some reason, started burning and it was itching. And I didn't know why. I didn't think nothing of it. But when I came back, I was like, you know what? I don't know if this has anything to do with anything, but I'm going to ask John anyway. Because it was right after that. Because it was right after. So I go to John. I'm like, John. I don't know if this has to do with anything with the paranormal or with your situation, but when I was walking off, my legs started burning and it was itching. And he was just like, well, you know what? My dad, he got in a car wreck and he was trapped. He was pinned by the legs. He was pinned by the legs. Oh, wow. And I was just like, wow. So that kind of, you know, <laughs> was, yeah, it kind of validated what was going on, you know? So it, it was a pretty active night over there. Oh, 
Yeah. So the first time, that's you know, you because you and Randy kind of say you can't really feel like like what I can feel. Like if I pick up on emotions, you normally don't do that. Well, you yeah. actually picked up on a physical uh, something, and that doesn't mean you're an empath or whatever. But you picked up on something physical to tie that. That, that, that was that's the first cool. time that has ever happened to me. I mean, I don't. I'm not a sensitive. I'm not a psychic. You know, I don't get any of that. So for something like that to happen to me, I was just like. Wow. You know, yeah. that, that was pretty intense. I just want to come to Texas a little bit more, don't I? Check some of this out. Yeah, hey, I'd be more than welcome to come back out there. That was yeah, a great especially, night. Especially when something like that is directly linked to what just happened, you know? Right. Yeah. It, was, it was like boom, 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 you know? It wasn't, exactly. there was no space in between to get your thoughts together. This just happened, you know? And, and I mean, like, while we were there, we were, like, getting, you know, uh, names. We, I mean... You, you you could feel it in the certain area. I was I was sitting down and it had like a cold area all around my face, and I'm like, do y'all feel that? And they're like, no. And then they came closer to me and they started feeling it. And I mean, it's just evidence after no, another like that, that. That was cool because I never really knew what to think about cold spots and stuff because you see it on the shows all the time. But when it happened, when I stuck my hand there. I mean, it was a clear, at least five degree change just right there by him. You right. know, John come over, he put his hand, he and felt it too. And we said, hey, could be the fan. But you know what? Not even a minute, two minutes later, when he it's started gone. feeling them, was gone. And the fans don't change. We never turn no. them off, you know? So right. it was a good five degree change right by him. You know? and, 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 you know, like I said, I, I've never experienced anything, you know, sensitive or anything like that. But, like, all these things were kind of happening and i mean it was like right there you know I yeah it at all so it was it was pretty intense so i saw uh chris's post about something major happening what the heck happened randy all right well yeah because kevin got time we, we were i was one eye i mean we were running on two hours of sleep oh so i, I was, know i, well, you know, I was drained at that point we was running on fumes but anyway yeah me and chris stayed and um another group showed up that was at a cemetery, I believe, and yeah. it was a bunch of newbies and all, you know, people had never done this, and when they got there, we gave them a tour of the house, and didn't do no investigating there, just gave them a tour. I was anxious to get them over to the chapel. I said, do y'all want to go see the chapel? Because I told them everything happened. Yeah, so we go over there, and as um, soon as we get in there, everybody sat down, quiet, you know, and me and I was saying, Frank, I think his name's Frank. Who, on uh, Agavar? No, no, the guy that was helping me out, that was sitting with me. Uh, the Betty's team. Mike, 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 Mike. I think his name was Mike. 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 Yeah, Mike. Mike. Okay, yeah. Me and Mike and Chris sat up on a little stage area, and everybody was in the pews kind of watching. So we just asked some questions, getting direct responses again. Betty came in, and she laid, there's an aisle in between the pews, and she was laying on her belly there. And she started complaining about her back, like something feeling like it was pushing down on her back. And we kind of made light of it, made, you know, kind of joked about it. I even have recordings, me saying, um, because the name we kept getting was Frank. That's why I got the name for you. I said, Frank, I said, if uh, that's your move sitting on the back, you ain't got no moves, my man, you know, making light. But she started, (laughs) she started being in pain and you could see it in her face. Like she was in a lot of pain. So we're like, all right, Mike, won't you, you know, go help her get her outside, you know, let her get some air. When he grabbed her under her arms to pick her up, she screamed, and from the small of her back all the way down to her toes, when he lifted her up, I mean, from right here down, it stayed like pinned to the floor, and she screamed. And then she really started freaking out, saying, something is on me, something. I mean, she's crying, freaking out. It took Mike and Chris to get over there and actually get her up off the floor and, and walk her out of the place. And when they did... Didn't, didn't you get a... Uh, didn't y'all ask? Didn't y'all... Or Chris ask? Well, yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Oh, okay. And when they walked her out, and then... But before that, when when she was on the floor, Chris said, can you, uh, can you get off of her? Direct, clear as day, everybody heard it. No. And everybody in the room all went, oh, my God. And I got all this recorded. All this is on audio, you know? Awesome. So everybody okay, heard it. Said no. And then that when they got her up, she was outside. I mean, sitting on the ground, just totally drained, crying. Her friend, what's her friend's name? Uh, uh, Angela, maybe? Ange- Angela was, was crying. Yeah, she was all emotional about it. 
But right after that, that's when Chris came back in and was like, all right, y'all, that's enough. You know, let's go. And we ended it there because it, it was intense. You know, it really was. Yeah, I've never I was seen wondering. Like that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. yeah I've been this for a while. I've never seen that before, ever. Yeah, just that, that's kind of cool that, you know, my first time uh, ghost hunting was kind of boring. I mean, we had very minimal stuff happening. Man, these guys got lucky. Not that it was nice for Betty to go through that. But, man, can you imagine being a newbie, being a first time on an investigation, your first time, and you see some shit like that? You're going to be like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah, and they'll probably first, talk about that for a year. You know? Chris, <laughs> told, to Chris told the group, he's like, well, they, what y'all are witnessing right now is rare. Y'all are witnessing paranormal activity right here in front of your eyes. Two of the guys, when we leave, when we got them out, two of the guys said, Man, that was my first time and my last. I'm never doing this again. They were freaked out, you know? So it, it was cool. For, to see that on your first time, it took me forever to get some validation. They got it on their first trip out. I know, right? And so that's the same thing with our team. Now, I was outside because, you know, I get overwhelmed with everything, and there were people seeing shadow people and, and things and knocking on the windows and stuff at the jail and uh, it was pretty intense, so I kind of went downstairs for just a little bit to kind of get a breather. And when I went back in, everybody's coming down from the second floor, and they're like, oh, wow. And I'm like, seriously? I step away for like five, ten minutes, and what happens? And she goes, we crossed over spirit. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, how in the world did that happen? And, you know, my, my co-founder is, this, you know, she's got abilities. She hates labels or whatever. So, uh she just she just doesn't like them and so she was feeling something and this other girl picked up the name and all that good stuff so uh i mean it was it was awesome but she, they got to see that for the first time out some spirit getting crossed over and they said you could even feel there was like 10 people in the room they said you could even feel it like just get lighter and it almost got brighter in the in the light i mean it was just weird wow. and they said they were all like wow man that was wild and i was like and of course i'm outside and freaking missed it you know what i'm saying but i i was glad that it that it happened with our group and i was glad that it happened for those people that were first time out because that's that makes it all worth you know it's like you said that first time is like wow it'll just set yeah. the tone for the rest of your your uh i guess addiction to paranormal because i i think that's what i have is an addiction <laughs> absolutely because I mean, how rare is that to to get that much activity in one night but to, not only that to do it for some people who may never win again if it was born you know and now these people that were really into it that gives them hope that gives them they're gonna go out and really try now you know and that makes yeah. us feel really good we was able to provide them with a a good experience, you know, to, to show them that this is real. It does. It's happening right in front of you. And we had, I think, 15 to 20 people in this when that happened to Betty, you know, oh, wow, that's... direct answers and seeing this with their own eyes. So what more validation do you need? That many people see it. You know, that many people aren't hallucinating. You know, they yeah. aren't tripping. And I have the recording to prove it. I have all the audio to prove everything that happened, you know. So that was cool. One thing we, we, we want to know is, they had a girl, okay? We even asked, um, what was his name? Uh, Greg, uh, the, the head guy, Gary? Uh, Greg? Uh, George Jones. George, George. I never can remember his name. I can't, but we I even can't asked George, that. is there a way we could find out, like, the people who went? Because right when uh, Betty started feeling like that, Chris said, does anybody have a camera? This girl started recording. So some girl that was there has everything on film. Which we don't have because we don't we know who it was. And we don't know who it was. So we're actually going to try to, he said he could give us the names of the people who came. We're going to try to get in touch with this person and get that footage. You know, we want yeah. that footage. I've never seen nothing like that before. You yeah. know, we didn't have a camera. So oh, somebody man. filmed it. I want it bad, you know, so <laughs> no we're going to try to track her down and find that, you know, and get that footage, you know. Well, I'm sure if we post on our walls and stuff, she's probably going to be following all of us because, I mean, we pretty much had a, had a good time the whole weekend. I mean, they, they should have known we were going to be trouble sitting next to each other and our vendor tables. You know? They didn't know. They know now. <laughs> right. They know now. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't for us, that place would have been dull. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you, you can say that again, for sure. So, I, I really did have a blast. I want to thank you again, too. You did a lot for us while we was out there, you know? Like, you were oh, awesome. Yeah, we had a blast. Pleasure. You know, I'm, I'm definitely glad I got to meet you, you know, and 
hang out with you. you, you I really like you, man. You're really cool. I want everybody I know, to know that. You, man. It was kind of funny because I came home and told uh, uh, Tina and everything. I said, man, I said, this guy and I are just so much alike when it comes to our kids that we will kill somebody with our bare hands. You just don't <laughs> mess with my kid. That's it. I'll kill you. And yeah, yeah. Uh, See, I said, nobody we got about our little talk on our little private bench in the shade while they were baking in the sun. <laughs> That's right. On the Hardy bench, no less. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, on the Hardy bench. That's right. <laughs> so there's some people that are in the chat room that want to know what and or where somebody can meet you guys. Well, there's a perfect opportunity to do that, and we were going to talk about that. Actually, there's a lot of opportunities because you're doing, first off, we got a, a awesome event in uh, June the 27th at the Andrew Jackson Hotel. Why don't you tell everybody about that? Because that's how you can meet these guys and investigate with them. Uh, come June 27th, uh, we're going to have an investigation at the Andrew Jackson Hotel here in New Orleans. And uh, it's, uh, it's $200. And that, <clears throat> excuse me, and that includes your room and breakfast for the next morning in the investigation. So you'll be investigating with myself, Randy, Hart, and Paranormal Society of New Orleans. Yep, and I, I get to, I'm gonna be there having a little fun with you guys too, which I cannot freaking wait for. Um, oh yeah, it's gonna be good. Oh, you know what? You're coming too. You're coming to my place, the the bars. Uh, That's right. Know, That's right. Be, yeah. I am. <laughs> we're we're gonna come in probably Thursday and leave out Sunday, so we got all weekend to to have fun and. We don't have to do Paracon stuff. It's 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 our fun time that time. So well, no y'all y'all showed us y'all's <laughs> hospitality, and now it's our turn. You know, so oh, cool, cool. So how can people get tickets to this thing and kind of explain the the extra person deal? So yeah, fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell them tell them how how to get tickets and and about the extra person deal. Oh 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 oh. Uh, uh, is it Chris? What you know? Uh, I gotta find. Chris is his email address. I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's, okay. it, it's, it's $200 for a ticket. And if you want to bring an extra person to stay in your room, it's it's only an extra 50 bucks. And you can bring t up to two people in your room. Uh, as far as uh, getting tickets, there's a website. Uh, I don't think they can see it. No, no, no. Actually... No, actually, all you got to do is uh, go on our Facebook. All you got to do is friend us if you're not our friend. Already. Actually, yeah, you can uh, you can actually friend uh, request us, and uh, we can give you more details about that. Uh, you can just look us up on uh, online, uh, Kevin Betta, yeah, Randy Kevin, Hardy. Randy Hardy, and uh, we have a little thing on there. I mean, that's the best way to do it. I mean, Chris is the brains behind this operation. He set it all up, so... I just, me personally, uh, if you friend me on Facebook, if you're not already friends with me, Randy Hardy, R-A-N-D-Y, H-A-R-D-Y. And I post the pic, the flyer of it on there. So there's information on there, and the website is on there if yeah. you want to go. So that you get a lot more information that way because, like I said, Chris set it all up. So I, I, he tells me, hey, Randy, show up this day and do this. That's what I do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'd like that I just don't have the information right in front of me right now. But, yeah, I mean, you just contact us. We'll get the information for you, and we'll show you exactly what you need to do. So it, it's no problem. Uh, just like I said, you look us up, Kevin Betzer, Randy Hardy, and we'll make sure you get your tickets if you're interested. So. We got, like, what, six? We got, like, six tickets left to the thing or seven tickets maybe? I believe, I, I believe it's seven tickets left. And they go on fast, so... If, if you're interested, you might want to jump up on that as soon as you can. Yeah, yeah I'm telling you right now, you do not want to miss this event. Um, they're going to team me up with Hart Fortenberry, which is a whole character in itself. Uh, I cannot wait to get to meet this guy. I, <laughs> he has been flabbergasting me and making my jaw drop and some of the stuff that he oh, does. He's a character. <laughs> right. and keep in mind, but everybody needs to keep in mind, too. I mean, these tickets are, are going fast because we've never done this before. This is our this, first this time. Is our first one we in. The first time the public has a chance to investigate with us is now. This is the first time we're doing this, you know. So that's why they're going fast, and it's a rare opportunity, you know. Yeah, it is a rare opportunity, and it, it. I mean, you can't go wrong with you guys because 
y'all make it so much fun and y'all but when it's time to get serious y'all get serious um oh yeah and, it's, and you get good evidence and and this place um from what i'm you know being told is it's never been investigated before tell us a little bit about andrew jackson hotel um uh, actually uh chris actually uh chris and his team uh paranormal society of new orleans was the ones who i, th I believe it, they were the first ones to actually investigate it oh, okay and, uh they came back and they they came to us and they were like look this place is really active you know and he was like i, I, I want to set up an event i want to do it and i want y'all to come and we just get all investigated together we'll get the public involved and let's see if we could do this thing yeah so basically before chris and them stepped foot in there this place was untouched you know and they pretty much went in there and did like a test run and and sure enough it worked out because they say this place is extremely haunted so that's why we set up this big event for it, you know. So other than them just doing that test run, this place is untouched by, you know, investigators. You know, and much less the public. I mean, you know. It, it, so it, yeah. it, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. And the thing that's even a bigger of a deal is it's an actual deal because the rooms themselves at the Andrew Jackson, we priced uh, on, a, on a Friday night were like $339 for one freaking room. So... You're not only getting a room, uh, it's almost like $150 off, but you're also getting to investigate with these guys, and you're getting breakfast in the morning. I mean, come on. And you're going to be in New Orleans. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a deal in itself. So, I mean, yeah, if, if, if you like investigating and you want to come out and meet us, perfect opportunity to do so. And don't forget, oh. you get to hit all these historic spots while you're out there, too. You know, John Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop, you know. The river walk in itself, you know, Pirates Alley, St. Louis Cathedral. I mean, I could go on for days, you know. I mean, this it's not only just the investigation, it's just these the Cafe Du Monde where you're gonna get breakfast, I mean, coffee and stuff in the morning. It's historic in itself. I mean, this is you're getting a piece of history in this. And New Orleans, New Orleans carries a heavy vibration about it. When you're there, you can feel it. You don't have to be a psychic or a sensitive, you know, no. this is a place all in its own, you know. So if you've never been there before, you're going to leave with a whole new respect, you know, for, for where we live. You know, I mean, this place, it just had, like, it has a heavy vibration about it, and you can feel it when you're here, you know. So it, it's, it's going to be an experience. Yeah, I'm telling you, I have never been, and we talked about that. You are kind of blown away that I've never been to New Orleans. Now, I technically, I had st a, a stopover or whatever, layover on my Greyhound bus for, back from Florida, uh, but... You know that was a whole experience in itself just inside the bus terminal so uh and i told y'all about that weird experience but other than being outside in new orleans i've only seen it on tv and on ghost adventures and on you know you guys show and i mean i i i know there's so much haunted stuff there it's just it's just overwhelming how much stuff is probably going to be there just the, just the history and the culture alone in new orleans yeah is enough, is enough stuff that you could just come down here and want to learn about that you know there's just so many things about it you know now at the food you know <laughs> I like to eat the food alone man i mean and i was blown away that you've never been here because we had our talk we chilled together you so much like me it's like how could this girl have never been where i'm from and be that much like me you know <laughs> so, i know i mean we were like damn i mean everything we were like what are you my long lost like you know twin or something this is just right. weird right. but yeah the new orleans um i was gonna say if they wanted to, it's on a friday night and on saturday night i don't know if they're y'all are gonna do tours or whatever but tell us about the new venture that you got going on with the uh, uh, yes check it out yeah uh <laughs> nola ghost hunting nola ghost hunting tours um that's uh that's uh actually mine and chris's uh we own the company and uh, we were running tours out of the Gemini Bar. And the story behind the Gemini Bar is uh, back in the uh, early 70s, uh, somebody lit it on fire. Uh, they killing 32 people inside. Uh, now, we investigated it a few times. And when we did this, it, this, this is where it kind of gets twisted. Because when we did this and we started getting evidence... It wasn't the victims of the fire that we were getting coming through the Echo Vox and other things that we, you know, uh, our equipment was given to us. And 
what it was, uh, actually, the manager there was tearing up through the floorboards, finding uh, Civil War suits and Civil War pistols, finding all kinds of old coins and stuff. And when wow. he started doing this, he, he uh, a lot of things started happening. That stirred it up. That kind of stirred it up. And he got scratched. He got scratched from his back all the way down to his arm. And that's when he called us up and he's like, y'all need to come down here and check this out. He's like, there's a lot of stuff going on down here. So we went down there and we investigated it. And ever since then, I mean, we could just walk in there right now. And I wouldn't be surprised something like that would come up. And actually, if there's fans of Ghost Hunters, they did it. Uh, yeah, you actually. Might, it you might have seen that episode. They did the place, you know, so... We're not making this up. This is legit. Everybody knows about it in the paranormal field who's been here. They know about this place, you know? And we would not even take a chance of bringing people in there on tours if we wasn't 100% that this place is active, you know? And that's something else that nobody's doing around here, you know? This is going to be the only chance. And about the Andrew Jackson thing, I got to say one more thing about that. Um, It's not like people are going to get here and just see us for the investigation and then that's it we'll be around the whole, probably the whole time y'all here you're gonna see us you know we're gonna be around we're gonna hang out you know so it's not like we're just gonna think uh you know stuff don't stink show up do the investigation and leave y'all you know so we're gonna be around hang with us talk to us get to know us on a personal level too yeah and let me tell you these guys are so much fun we we uh, stayed up a little later than we should have on friday night we <laughs> We kind of yeah. went over to a, a place called the McClendon House in Tyler, and that place was pretty pretty cool, too. I mean, uh, Randy, what happened to you in that room by yourself? Did you get a little activity in there or upstairs or what? Hey, like I said, I'm a man, and I will admit it. I've been doing this for a long time. I've never, ever been scared. I've never gotten scared before, thank God. And it, you were there. Kevin was there. Nobody was with me, but... For the first time, I got scared because we were getting a little, <clears throat> excuse me, we was getting a little bit of activity upstairs. I went up by myself. I was getting a little activity. Betty came up there. And so, and then everybody came up. So it got a little loud. So we went back out. Everybody was outside. Everybody was ready to go. And I think it was Chris or you that asked me, um, well, Randy, do you want to go up there by yourself again to see, you know, if anything happens? Sure, of course. I, everybody knows, especially if you've seen the show, that's what I do. <clears throat> so as I walk in, you're walking towards the steps, and you have to make a U-turn to go up the steps. Yeah. When I made that U-turn, there's a music room right to the right. When I made that U-turn to go in that room, up the stairs, I mean, two loud, clear, distinct footsteps happened right in the doorway of that music room. <laughs> and I froze in place. I, I've never done that before. But I froze in place because it was so close to me. And I didn't, I, for a second, I didn't know what to do. That's never happened. I wanted to go upstairs. My first instinct was to go upstairs to get away from it. But like, no, this is what I'm here looking for. So I went into the music room and I set up my equipment and started trying to get anything. And actually, I got no activity. But the personal experience of the footsteps was a first for me. Not that I've never heard footsteps before, but it's the first time something spooked me. And actually scared me and made my hair stand up out of fear. That's never happened to me before. So thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing I was bringing it up for is because the first time that, that he took uh, George uh, at Jericho's Tours of Tyler or whatever, the first time he ever took us to McClendon House, um, I was with Betty and them, and I was with my, my buddy Al on my team, which y'all didn't unfortunately get to meet him last night. But um, anyway... We walked, we didn't even get in the door. And the minute he opened that door, the stupid radio went off by itself and started playing. And George kind of turned around and looked at me and was like, oh boy. And I said, hey, that's a good sign, man. If we're going to start off like this, let's do this. So we went in there and we were like all right there by that door um, where Chris captured that photo with it looked like a shooting like light anomaly or something like that down in the down on us when we were all sitting there. Um, but we were in that area. And we heard something upstairs sounded like it fell and was dragged. And we just all looked like on Scooby-Doo, you know, when they're all lined up, you know, doing this. That's what we all looked like that night. It was hilarious. But that house is extremely active with footsteps and, 
and things like that. So I w I'm not at all surprised that you heard footsteps there, especially in that music room, because I don't know if George told you, but in that room, a lot of actual congressional things were signed, big important you know laws for the state of Texas were signed and in that room. So, uh, you know, it's funny. I mean, not only Randy had an experience, I don't know if I told you, but I also had an experience in there. And I was, I had my equipment set up and I was fooling with the Echo Vox and what was coming through sounded like a little girl. And I started asking, what is your name? And we actually got the name Ann. And we were asking, well, how old are you? Uh, and she said she was four years old. So, you know, we kind of talked to her for a little while and started, you know, trying to get a little evidence from her. So afterwards, you know, we were all outside and I wanted to go to George and ask him about it. And I was like, George, uh, is there a little girl here that had died? And uh, he's like, yeah, her name was Ann. And I was like, I didn't know that. Yeah, we didn't know that. And I was like, wow. And I was like, well, how old was she? And he's like, she was about three or four years old. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was pretty cool that, you know, I got this and then I got it confirmed. So that, that gives you chills when that happens, you know? I yeah, mean, it does. Got the it name does. and the age. I mean, what's the odds to get a name and an age and, it, and it's legit and we didn't know? What's the odds of that? One yeah. in a million if it's fake, you know? So that's legit, you know? <clears throat> yeah, definitely. There's no there's no editing or TV editing or nothing going on with that. That's that's pure D paranormal experiences at its finest. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that you guys came to Tyler and I'm glad you guys had such an amazing time. You know, your panel was was really good and ex definitely uh, interesting, um, especially when Chris uh, passed out, <laughs> almost passed out, fell off his. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, like I said, we Two hours, two hours yeah. of sleep. Yeah. And like, well, well, wait, this, this is the funny thing. We're all sitting there and we're talking. And uh, Randy was, you know, doing his little speech or whatever. And I'm looking in the audience and I notice people are laughing. <laughs> I'm like, what are these people laughing at? I thought maybe my fly was down or something. Like, like, book, book hanging out or something. You know, you know and, I, and then I just happened to like turn my head and I look over. And I see Chris like this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, he's sleeping. And I was like, Chris, wake up. So, you know, I mean, I I had to let everybody know what was going on because they were probably thinking, you know, Chris is just being rude, but he really wasn't. I mean, I mean, we were, since we got off the plane, we didn't stop. So yeah. it was just like a nonstop thing for like the whole weekend. Yeah. But we enjoyed ourselves, you know, it was great, it was great. Hey, Selena, I want to yeah. introduce you. Come here. Come here. This is my daughter, Shalaya. Oh, I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> She's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Your daddy loves the heck out of you, girl. <laughs> She's talking to you. Your daddy loves you so much. <laughs> I know. Like, I know that. <laughs> yeah. <Duh. laughs> So are, are y'all going to be running the tours on Saturday night after the event, like on June 28th? Are y'all going to be doing a, a tour, or are y'all going to take a break that night? What you mean for... Like, the like after the Andrew okay. Jackson event, if people come yeah. that weekend? Yeah, she's act we're doing Andrew Jackson 27. She's asking on the next night, are we doing a tour? But we probably... Um, I think we might be doing uh, the NOLA ghost hunting tours at the Gemini. No, that's what she means. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should... Do yeah, the, uh, the NOLA Ghost Hunting Tours, we're going to be running it uh, Friday through Monday. And I'll be doing Mondays. Uh, I believe Randy may be doing, what, Wednesdays? I think I'm going to be doing Wednesday and Thursday. Or two days, Wednesday and something else. Well, either way, I mean, we're going to be doing it Friday through Monday. And, you know, you can also set up private tours. Or if you want one of us, you can request one of us, you know, and see if we can set anything up. Look at the face you made, bro. It's frozen. <laughs> I think you're frozen. Yeah, it's been freezing a little bit. It's kind of funny. It's face, though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was just saying because a lot of a lot of the tickets that are sold are a lot of my friends, and so they were gonna make the whole weekend out of it. So I'm like, 
you know, well, so what's going to happen Saturday night, you know, that they can do? I mean, you can go sightseeing. And another thing. Yeah, that's uh, tons of things you can do. Oh, yeah. But what, what uh, the thing that we were talking about and that my friend uh, Carissa was so freaked out about was that all the, the people were buried above ground. That just blew her mind. She was like, how does yeah. that work? I go, yeah, well, it works there because of the flooding. And I and she goes, well, yeah, we're, we're below sea level by 18, 20 Yeah, 18 20 feet, feet below sea level. Jeez, Louise. So, so the buried, if, if bodies were buried in caskets under the dirt, when it floods just even a little, those caskets actually would float up out of the ground. They figured that out way back when. <laughs> the thing about our above ground cemeteries is they're beautiful. I showed you pictures, but yes. to see them with your own eyes, to walk through, that's it's something terrible. everybody has to do. And I'd like to bring y'all to my favorite one. I'd like to show y'all, you know, especially what I was telling you about. Yeah. Life Yet number one, beautiful. One of our I, oldest ones. Actually, we, I mean, uh, me and Randy, we went, actually went in there. I believe I was saying that on the panel about what happened. Yeah, when I climbed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, well, we, I mean, it, was, it was broken up. There was nothing in there. Yeah. So we just crawled in and we started doing EVP sessions in there. And yeah. uh, got the one that said, leave now. Yeah, we were asking. I, Randy was in there. He's like, well, one no. I said, if you want me to leave, tell me to leave. And as I'm saying my last word, leave, it starts. It says, leave now. I didn't yeah. hear it, of course, because if I would have, I'd have left. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't until the next day when we started reviewing all of our evidence yeah. and we actually caught that. So I, it was awesome. And that same night, just to throw this out there, he seen him and somebody else that was with him seeing a shadow person when I wasn't by them. And we did research the next day after this happened. And then we found out that people are known to see shadow figures in this particular cemetery, which we didn't know. <laughs> So uh, when when the, we go to the Jumani Lounge or whatever, what is this where the little girl is down in the basement? Is that the location that? Uh, no, uh, the little girl in the basement was actually a residence. House, yeah. Okay. It was a residential case. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a residential in, on St. Charles. Yeah, the Gemini is the one where the, the club in the 70s was one way in, one way out upstairs. Okay, and it was an upstairs lounge, but there was one way in, one way out, which was up the small hallway with stairs. So when he poured that gas and lit that fire, there was no way out, and the windows were barred, you know, because it was two stories. They didn't want people getting drunk and suicide, so which <laughs> trapped them in there. You know, that trapped the people in there yeah. that burned them all. We've seen pictures with people hanging out of these barred windows charred. You know, oh, it, was, it was bad. I mean, it, it, was, it was pretty gruesome. It was bad. Really and the bad. thing that you, you kind of told me about was that it was homosexual. Uh, it was gay men. It was yeah. uh, a gay yeah. a gay men bar, you know. It was, so, it was a gay bar, and actually, I think it was the first gay church on the third floor. Yeah. So oh. yeah. And yeah. the thing is, is that story didn't get out as much as it should have. It did not get the recognition it should have because back then it was frowned upon you know that yeah oh back yeah then it wasn't it wasn't widely accepted as it is today so that that's well, i wish it was a little more widely that. accepted today but then we're getting there we're getting there we're a lot further it's than we were in the time. 70s you know that yeah. story would be out to, uh, today if it happened it'd be a huge deal back yeah. then they swept it under the rug and just left it alone you know which yeah. is a shame that's a shame so a lot of those shame. people didn't have closure you know yeah and you know what that's that that's one place when uh, Chris and you guys were telling me about that I've been wanting to go now really bad because I think I, me being gay, I can probably relate. They can probably relate to me, and we might get some really cool stuff coming out of there. You know, hey, I think that would be a great idea when you I, come down. I was gonna bring my cousin, you know, who, who's uh who's gay, but it didn't work out. He wound up going out of town for a job or something, but so that's still yet to be done. You're gonna be, you know, our first one, of, and I hope I hope they can connect with you because that makes for better investigation and evidence for me and you you know for us yeah it does i mean and and that's exact so speaking of evidence what is your best piece of evidence that, that each of you have gotten i know they're probably going to be different but which one is is go ahead kevin tell me what your favorite piece of evidence was honestly i think last night was probably one of the best i mean just a validation in the way i felt you know it was just 
so it, it, it was emotional and you know tr you know it, it was all happening all at once so i i mean i would have to say that was probably one of the the craziest nights that i had was out in texas you know so, awesome awesome <laughs> that makes us feel mine, good what about you randy mine I, last night was crazy but i'm not gonna give the same answer uh Actually, it was that EV. It was that EVP because that was the one that said "leave now" in that tomb. Because that's what made me believe it. That was the first legit evidence I've ever gotten. But and because it was my first, of course, that sticks with me. But right. it was that Holt Cemetery, which is the only cemetery in New Orleans that people are buried below ground. And I got I got scratched down my back there when me and Kevin was there investigating. That is my. We were, uh, we were out there. It's a, it's a poor man's cemetery. Yeah, people with no family and or whatever get buried there. There's, there's a lot of voodoo. There's a lot of voodoo down there. And uh, if you walk in through the graveyards, you see, like, the voodoo dolls. And uh, you see a lot of voodoo stuff on the ground where we were standing. They had, like, a circle with stones on it. And, and the voodoo doll on the tree. And it, they had voodoo dolls on the tree. So we were thinking this was probably like a ceremonial place for, you know, the voodoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I was standing trying to fool with the uh, digital recorder. Randy had the camera. I'm just filming him. I wasn't doing anything. He was filming me. I'm getting, you know, the stuff set up. And all of a sudden he's like, my, my back's burning. I, you know, what, what the hell's going on? You well, know? I know. Remember, actually, I, I jumped up and I asked him, is there like a spider or something on me? Because it didn't feel like a It just felt like a pat, like a little pat. Yeah. So I thought yeah. something, a bug, we, you know, there's trees and stuff. I thought something jumped on me or or, or something, you know, a bug or something hit me. And I, I don't like spiders. I'm scared to death of spiders. I have right too. Now. Oh, my God. All right, I well, too. So I turn around and the first thing I, I do, is there a spider on me or something? Is there a bug on me? He said no. So I left it alone. He starts doing the EVP session, and this is five minutes later. It just kept, it started to burn and burn, and just got, it felt like it was on fire. I just cut him off in the middle of his door. I said, Kevin, my back is on fire. Like, it's burning. So I was like, give yeah. me the camera. Give me the camera. I, I grabbed the camera. I was like, turn around. We lifted up his shirt. He had full scratch marks going all down his back. Yeah, and he said, you got scratches on your back. Of course, my first wet thing was bullshit. I ain't got no scratches on my back, you know. He took my camera and took a picture of it. We still have those pictures somewhere. And where these scratches are, he had to touch it. For, I couldn't even touch it with either one of my hands. You know, right in the middle when you're in the shower, you can't get that part of your back. Yeah, so oh, yeah. <laughs> that's where they were. It's four of them right down my back, you know. And that freaked me out a little bit, you know. I mean, here I am recording him, and he's standing in the voodoo circle. I get scratched. Like, go scratch him. <laughs> so, might have been a protective circle. I was, I was protected. Yeah, he, who knows? But that that was, that really opened my eyes to, hey, this stuff is not all, you know, sweet. It's yeah. not all sweet sugar. You know, there's it, it's some dark moments, too. Yeah. So, yeah that yeah. was my most, you know, memorable piece. So have y'all ever done, like, a, a private or whatever or even a, a you know, big case that, uh, by even a business that was uh, really a bad entity that you had to deal with? I mean, have you ever had a real nasty entity that you've had to try to help the client get rid of? or? Uh, not, not really. We really yeah. haven't had... Rare. We really haven't had anything like demonic or anything like that. I mean... Yeah. So I, I really... I, I mean, I haven't... No, I feel like we lucked up so far. You know, we have, we've never dealt with anything dark with a, you know, with some kind of personal vendetta out to hurt somebody or, you know, we've never, so far, we've never dealt with that yet, you know, and I'm, I'm glad we have it, you know, but if we'll cross that bridge when we get to it on how to deal with it, you know, because <laughs> yeah. we haven't had to deal with that yet, you know. So. Yeah, see, that's the problem. A lot of people, uh, because of all these shows that are out, you know, and I'm not saying anything about y'all show, I'm just saying the stuff that they show is not everything that happens. They show the highlights, they show the shit right. that's for you. And then people go out and they stir this shit up thinking that they're investigators and they don't know how to, sometimes you can't, you can't wash this stuff off with soap and water. You know, this stuff sometimes attaches to you. You really and need, they always before, go to demonic though. They always, it's, it, they always say, oh God, I've got a, a demon in my house. Right. And normally it's just maybe their loved one trying to tell them something or maybe pass on it, you know, some sort of message. And they, it's this, these days they always go to it's demonic. It's evil. Negative. 
Yeah. And, it, and it's and, not. And that's another thing. When you do an investigation, you know, do your research. Look and find out the history behind it, you know? Yeah. And when you, you find your history, you go out there and try to think logical, you know? You know, why is this happening? What's going on? What's making this happen, you know? So always keep that in your, in your head to try to think logical. Well, not only that, you need to protect yourself and be respectful. That's what most people need to know. Be respectful. Yeah, on the show, they showed me sometimes, you know, um, being uh, aggressive or provoking. But, you know, I'm always respectful, though. You know, I don't I don't disrespect because that was people, too. And I don't I'm not disrespectful, but the provoking that I do is as lighthearted as, as, as it can be because they don't what they don't show is the five hours we would have when nothing happened i get restless you know i get bored so yeah, yeah i want to try something different i want to try to draw it out if it don't want to come out on its own you know but right. be respectful people need to know don't go in there being disrespectful thinking because you can't see this thing nothing can happen to you you know people need to know be respectful when you do this you know that could be your mother a dead mother in there, you know, that could be your dead kid in there, you know, so be respectful, you know, that's what people yeah. need to know. Always, yeah, because I remember the, the, I guess y'all were at the old mill or whatever, I think it was one of the first episodes, I'm not... Depot, train depot. Yeah, train depot, and they showed you going, come out here, and they, you know, hitting the stick and stuff, and I was like, I guarantee you that ain't happening all the time, and, you know, some people, uh, like when it first, the ghost show started, you know, there was a, a few on there that would scream and yell and stuff like that. And people didn't understand sometimes why they did that. And uh, me working with them, I kind of got to know why they would do that. I mean, not that I always agreed with it, uh, the approach or the words that were used, but the reasoning behind the yelling was to, to shake out any residual EVPs, anything imprinted in the environment. Um, and it and it did help, but I also found that um, it's not always necessary. You know, air cues like music of that time, uh, trigger objects, things that you don't have to scream and, and try to get your point across. Because the you know, Penny, my co-founder, always says when you start yelling, they're not deaf, they're just dead. Right. I got I got negative attention <laughs> for that. I got negative attention for that, and the reason I did that, it was boring, but. Right before that happened, not, I'm not trying to defend myself. I, I do it sometimes, you know, I'll be the first to say it, but it, it, we was there for a long time. And I don't know if you noticed, but right before that happened, I got down in this hole that was in the floor and they had a big board right above me, which Kevin spotted. We couldn't see in there, it was dark. That was shaking. Oh yeah, I, did right I thought it was gonna come and, down at first. And I kind of got a feeling like this thing wants to drop, uh, wants to hurt me. So yeah, I, and I got negative. You know, response to that, but hey, it is what it is. I did it. I own up to it, you know. But and you also notice when something happened to my sister a few episodes later, I didn't go in there. You, I didn't curse. I was like, look, if you're gonna do that, do it to me. Don't do it to right. my sister. You know, she, she didn't. She didn't do you anything. You know, and it wasn't. Oh, you son of a b a s o b. I didn't do all that. You know, so no, it, it doesn't happen all the time, and it is what it is. You know, it happened, and that's that. But you're right. Yeah, that, I mean. I you know. totally get that because when I when I went to Villisca, you know, like I was telling you that that mama bear thing kind of after knowing that this this stupid ass hurt six innocent children and not only with the sharp end of the freaking axe, but the blunt end of it and had, you know, it just went all over me and I just went off. Now, I did start screaming at that shadow person and I did go off on that spirit. And you know what? He deserved it. Yeah. Um but thank God I do protect myself. We, Our team, before anybody even got to the Old Smith County Jail last night, we always do a protection prayer. Um, we always try to close out with a protection prayer. Sometimes we forget, and then we're like, oh, crap, so we do our own. Um, but we always try and always strive to protect ourselves from anything dark. And we haven't really had a whole lot of problems with that. Um, I was going to talk with you a little bit about voodoo. Um, about the homage of the tobacco voodoo. I don't know if y'all know anything about voodoo, if y'all have ever, if y'all know any voodoo people or that deal with you know, voodoo. You know what you need to talk to about that? Heart. Oh, okay. The thing, the thing about voodoo, though, is I'm born and raised in New Orleans, so it's part of my culture. I was raised knowing about I do I don't practice it, but right. I, because I, I respect it. So yeah. I'm not going to go out there doing 
stuff that I, I don't know the outcome of. I don't know the, the repercussions of it, you know, because I do believe in voodoo. I know it's real. Voodoo, hoodoo, it does exist. I mean, it's part of our culture. If you're born and raised in New Orleans, you're going to hear it from your grandmother, your grandfather, your aunt. You're going to hear this stuff, and you're going to see it. There's voodoo shops all over New Orleans, you know, with people that actually practice it, and we know some of them personally. You know, and I do believe in it, and I do respect it enough to not fool with it because I know I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to try to diagnose a sickness on you. I'm not a voodoo doctor neither, so I'm not going to try to do that stuff, you know. And honestly, some of these voodoo people, they know so much about that that they're on the level, not as a medical, like as a medical doctor is about their patients and knowing what to do and how to treat them. They're on that same level, but just on on a different level because it's voodoo. But they're up there and they know about it. You know, they study it. They practice it. So they have a, a imaginary PhD in this stuff. So I let them do that and let them fool with it. Heart's been around a lot more than me. I just heard about it a lot more and seen it growing up. But I respect it too much to go out there fooling with it. If I hear something, you're not going to see me out there doing something to try to, you know, re- recreate it. Because I don't right. know, you know, like we did one thing on the show, Hart did it. I was just helping him, you know. And and, so. and that's another thing. Like with our show, I mean, we got different people. It, it, it's different people doing different things. Now, Hart, he's more of like the kind of voodoo kind of thing with the Greek Greek stick and all that. <laughs> Myself, you know, I mean, I'm more of a scientific kind of guy. I like to have, the, you know, the instruments, the gadgets and all that. I try to go with more scientific ways. But, I mean... I, I can't deny some of the stuff, you know, Hart's doing, it's just, you know, you're watching that and you're kind of like, yeah, right, you know? People but, it, cool. I mean, you're watching yeah. it and, 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 and the things happen and you're like, wow, that really did work, you know? So People it's say it's, it's kooky, it's crazy, but you know what? I've been knowing it a long time. It's never steered us wrong, you know? Yeah. And, and I've seen some of it work, so people can call it what they want. It works, you know, and I've seen it. So, hey, I'm not going to tell Hart stop. I'm not going to tell him change, which nobody could anyway, because <laughs> this thing's passed down from his family. You know, right. like, he makes jokes and he acts, he is crazy, but <laughs> he acts crazy. But you know what? The things he's doing, he truly believes in that stuff, you know, and it rubs off on us because we see it work. So hey, I believe it, too, you know, so and he's that guy, you know, so, hey, I, more power to him and more respect to him when you're here. We're going to take you to some of these voodoo shops and stuff and let you maybe let them talk to Juju. Yeah, they'll, they'll change your mind about that, man. Seriously, it, it, it's a big deal down here, you know? It's oh, I know, fun. I know. We we tried to find a voodoo shop when we were at the Myrtles, and there ain't none down the, up in that area because it's well, like... I'm surprised, they do, but they kind of keep it on a low on a, yeah. on a DL because they don't like talking about you it. You have to know somebody that knows somebody. Right, you, know? you got you to know. You got to know somebody. We know a lady, Juju. <laughs> Her name is Juju Voodoo, and she has been practicing this, practicing this her whole life. And wow. when I'm actually, I'm going to get in touch with her probably tonight or tomorrow and just see if when you're down, you know, she if you sit with her and talk to her, I'm telling you, it, it's real, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a big deal, you know, it really is. Cool. Well, you know what? I really appreciate you guys coming on tonight. Thanks, Randy, for uh, joining us. Can you tell everybody how to find you guys on Facebook real quick before we sign off? Yeah, uh, d- just look us up. I mean, Kevin Betzer, you know, Brandy Hardy. Uh, you can also find uh, our local paranormal group, Down South Paranormal Research, uh, the NOLA Ghost Hunting Tours. Uh, look us up all on Facebook. I mean, when you find one, you'll find the rest, you know, through that person. You know? I mean, we, we have all kinds of ways of getting in touch with each other. I mean, you find one person, you're going to find the other one. So it, it, it it's, should be simple. Uh, just look us up. Let me, let me throw this out there, though, and I promise I'm not knocking nobody and I'm not talking bad about anybody. But big difference between us, our Facebook pages, they're not fan pages. They're real pages where we actually talk back. We communicate with people. You know, we don't just post stuff, and it's not a fan page. It's set up just like your page. It's set up just like everybody's normal page, you know. We talk back to you. We answer your questions. You know, we try. i put it that way because I I can get anywhere from 50 to 100 private messages in a day, and I don't want people getting mad that I don't answer, but I don't have time to go through all of it, you know. But people post on my page or ask me something, I try my best to get back to them, you know. 
So yeah, so you guys are real. You guys are real guys. You're not all. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, I mean, yeah, we just average guys. So yeah. look us right. up. I mean, come talk to us. Say hi. You know, we're always yeah. open. Yeah, they're good guys. And oh, my producer wants to speak to you guys too uh, after the show. So uh, I don't know what that's all about, but just hang tight and all I'll right. have to show up. All right, you guys. Thanks a lot for joining me. All right, sounds good. good. I can't wait to see you again. I know. I can't wait to see you too. And you too, Kev. We're going to have a ball. All right. All right. Okay, uh, everybody. That, that was them. I don't know if you can still see them. If you can, that's great. Uh, just want to. <laughs> Get you guys to go to the Granberry Paranormal Expo, which is May 17th. I'm speaking there, and a guy from X-Files named Dean Hagland is also speaking, and I can't, for the life of me, remember the female that's speaking. There's three of us. Um, and then we're going to have to go to New Orleans. you got to go to New Orleans. I mean, there's just nothing else you got to do on June 27th. Uh, and stay the weekend. Have a blast. Hang out with these guys. Hang out with us. I mean, it's going to be so much fun. You do not want to miss it. So... I will post the flyer on my page. Kevin and Randy will post it on theirs. And I'm sure Chris Mel... I don't even know how to say his last name. Say his Malson. last name. Malonson. Malonson. They oh. get me kind of confused on how to say it. Oh. Chris Malonson. Okay, well, Chris Malonson will be on my show <laughs> next Sunday. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about more about Andrew Jackson and the things you got going on down there. But you guys have a great evening and a great week. And I'll be talking to both of you guys, all right? Awesome. Can't wait. All right. Peace out. Eric, they're all yours. Yeah. <laughs>